Hey friends, Jason here checking in on the coronavirus stickers. A little bit of a green day today, and that's not surprising given the fact that we saw some red in the market. And as we know, there's an inverse correlation right now between the coronavirus stickers and the overall market. So we're going to look at some of the names. We're going to take a look at uh, what's what's happening and what we could expect to see in the next few days. Looking at APT on the daily time frame, a nice bounce just today off of our EMA 26. We held that low today and we held EMA 26 again today. So acting as an important level for support for us, we did see a good green uh, high, but we saw some profit taking toward the end of the day. So we have a couple scenarios just right out of the gate. We have a big drop and we have a little bit of a bounce with some downside pressure. So if we end up in a bear flag situation, we're going to expect a red day tomorrow, staying underneath the high of the most recent candlestick today and looking for a little bit of oscillation back and forth. If that comes to pass, then we're going to be looking at more seriously the thesis of having a daily bear flag. If we see another big green day tomorrow, then we're going to just play it as a nice bounce off of an EMA 26 and see how much strength we have. It's unlikely at this point that we're going to simply go to new highs more than likely we will establish a higher low underneath 41.59 if we see a lot of increase in fear and market weakness in general uh, keeps going down otherwise the most likely outcome is going to be a contained range where we have uh, a more defined price uh, development so daily time frame not a lot of uh, not a lot of anything more to talk about here actually so let's jump to the four hour time frame on the four hour we have developed a pretty consistent four hour downtrend or high or low lower high lower low now we're looking for lower high and then possibly a lower low so let's go out and remove those two drawings if this is our lower low what we're going to look for on the hourly time frame is going to be a loss of higher lows which will cause us to go for four hour consolidation if we lose 1261 then that four hour downtrend continues if we hold 1261 then we have the possibility of changing that trend with a higher high over 2165 Right now, we're looking for trend continuation, so it's going to be a low underneath 2165, or if we break 2165, we're going to be looking for a new lower or lower high under 2689. We haven't yet locked in 2165 as our key level. On the hourly time frame, here's that loss of hourly higher lows, so higher low, higher low. You get the idea. Up here, we break it. We see bulls buying the dip, but we see another bearish attack, so as long as this consolidates, and continues down we're going to watch the 15 minute time frame for a change to signify that hourly higher low is set if we don't get that then we go back to the four hour time frame and see if we can get a four hour higher low on the 15 minutes here we are in a nice 15 minute downtrend in order to change that story bulls need to get over 1917 or more critically 1919 anything under that is going to be a lower high in the 15 minute time frame and then we're looking for support at 1755 L-A-K-E on the daily time frame, very similar story, not as much strength. We have an indecision candlestick with this nice spinning top right here on the daily. Good upper and lower range to keep an eye on. Still curious about support at 1566. On the daily time frame, we are looking at a little bit of volatility. No trend, really. We're getting lower highs and lower lows, but we did establish or we're trying to establish a higher low above this pre-market level of 1530. No real clarity on the hour, four hour time frame and on the hourly time frame, we have lost higher lows. So we're looking for consolidation. Anything over top of 1617 is going to be a nice hourly level to look at, but that's so close to 1566. If I was a bear, I would want to push that down and try to get as close as possible to see if I can break it. If I'm a bull, I'm going to be cautious. I'm going to be waiting for more confirmation than normal for 1617 to hold as a higher low. CODX on the daily time frame. What has been the big leader is showing a little bit of weakness. Yesterday, this was a momentum candlestick. If this was the bearish attack and bullish response that we expected it to be, we wouldn't have opened right where we are. It's nice that we've got, you know, we've opened and we've regained everything that we lost or gained today, but this is an indecision candlestick. This is complete market balance and relatively low volume. If this was at the top of the trend or the bottom of the trend, that'd be more useful. But right now, it's just showing it's essentially a big shoulder shrug. I got no idea. Market doesn't know what we're going to do with this. So there's a lot of speculation, and we just have to react to whatever the market's going to do for us. So to do that, we watch the highs and lows of our day. We go to the sub time frame to see what's going on. On the four hour time frame, we don't quite have an equilibrium. Um, we've got our high, our low. We're just not seeing that balance. It's just sort of petering out into nothingness. And on the hourly time frame, we're looking for a little bit more clarity. What could have been such a beautiful equilibrium is in fact just a 
hourly downtrend with our highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. And now bears need to defend this key level of 13. Let's turn those magnets on again. 1351. If we lose 1351, we have support at $11. Below that, we got a long way to fall. So caution on CODX if we see weakness tomorrow. VIR. Another relatively weak response to what should have been a great follow through. We didn't really bounce off any EMAs. So we're seeing downside continuation and possibly just looking at a little bit of a daily upside counter trend. So what we expect to see, and what I mean by that is if we've got a big move to the downside, we expect to see a little bit of a bounce. And we expect to see that last a little bit as bears sort of recover from this big move that they've had. So it's not uncommon to see a green day after a big drop. If we go to the four hour time frame, here is that tightening range, tightening up a little bit, still being pinned down by our EMA 26. And in the hourly time frame, we are looking at lower highs and lower lows again in a nice hourly downturn. So to change this story, what we need to do is establish a very definitive higher low on the hourly time frame over 3608. And at this point, it's a little bit hard to pick out what level I would like because this is pre-market. I just need something that's going to tell me definitively that we changed this hourly trend. Right now, there's not a clear level for us to work with. 42.19 is nice, but it's a pre-market level with really, really little volume. Ultimately, at this point, we need to break over 47. If we can get a better lower high on the hourly pullback, establish a higher low, then break that, then that story changes a little bit. But VIR is relatively indecisive, not giving us a lot of clarity. NVAX on the daily time frame. Big gap down, so momentum from that big red candlestick yesterday, bouncing from the area of our EMA 12, relatively low volume indecision candlestick on the daily time frame, and the four hour not giving us much clarity. We're still heading down. Last couple candlesticks have established higher lows, which means we may have an hourly counter trend, more than likely a 15 minute counter trend because our hourly is rejecting from our EMA 12 and our EMA 8 currently rejecting from our EMA 12. So. Bulls need to hold 992. If we go to the 15 minute time frame, you can see that ever so slight 15 minute uptrend, 10 psychological is going to be an important level for them to hold. If bulls lose $10 or ten dollar psychological, they're likely to lose 1992 psychological. So we go back to that ugly hourly downtrend. Let's check out one more. And people ask why I don't cover more tickers. It's because things like the twits and the tweets, they really limit you to five tickers. If I if I did 10 tickers, and posted them all, none of them would show up in any of the feeds. So we are limited by the social media aspects that, of what we use for what we can cover and reach an audience. If I do 10 videos or 10 tickers and I post them all, no one's gonna see them anywhere. So that's the unfortunate part of the current structure. But nonetheless, IBIO, pretty sound rejection from that high. Big red candlestick, another red candlestick. Volumes decreasing, a little bit of a dip buying, but we saw that yesterday too, so not a lot of clarity. The question is, are we getting into bounce territory? Is that what's happening? And on the hourly time frame, we are not bouncing. We've not been oversold because we're doing this stair step on the way down. Lower highs, lower lows, that's the name of the game. We could try to find ourselves a little bit of a wedge. Nothing is gonna be concrete here because we've only got a couple touches on that side. And if I force myself to look at something, you know, it's already, already broken in my pre-market levels. So this is just a exercise in trying to force fit something to create a bias. Not the case. We need to focus on the trend. And until this trend changes, we are in an hourly downturn with our most recent high at, let's well, adjust that back down again, 209. So bulls need to break 209 on the hourly to change this downtrend. Right now, support is 160. Anything over top of that is going to be an hourly higher low. We may have formed it here at 174, but we need to lock that in with a nice bull break. That's it for today. Thank you guys for everyone who has come to check out chartguys.com or emailed me for questions. Uh, I love talking to you guys, and I love teaching technical analysis, so keep it up. And I look forward to talking to more of you guys in Slack. Chartguys.com. Check it out.